Council, I'd like to first recognize that we are on the traditional territory of the Sinemic First Nations. Our clerk tonight will be Ms. Sheila Gurry. The question period sign-up sheet is on the partition wall near the gallery. If any a member of the audience uh, has a question regarding an agenda item, would you please write down your name and the agenda item on the sheet? And at the start of question period, I will call up those who have signed up to the podium to address council. And the first item is the, on the agenda is the introduction of late items, Ms. Gurry. Thank you, Worship. The addendum that was published on Friday contained the three items outlined in your agenda this evening. For agenda item 7A, Mr. Dan Brady, um, we added his presentation for council and the public to have ahead of time. And he's doing a presentation under 7A, Municipal Regional District Tax, um, and the presentation on the five-year performance of the 2% Municipal Regional and District Tax. For agenda item 9A, we're adding the delegation from Norman Hamilton, re the Howard Johnson Hotel and Low Income Housing. And agenda item 10B, Subdivision Control Bylaw 1989, number 3260 is being removed or had been removed from the agenda. Thank you very much. A motion for approval of the agenda as amended. So moved, Councillor Martin, seconded Councillor Thorpe. All those in favor, motion carries, thank you. Motion for the adoption of the minutes is circulated. Moved, Councillor Armstrong, seconded Councillor Hemmons. All those in favor, motion carries. Mayor's report. A number of positive items. The spring and summer activity guide is ready for pickup for those of you active citizens in the city. Uh, they'll be distributed uh, at the city recreation centers along with local grocery stores, malls, and libraries. Uh, and that was uh, started out on uh, last Friday, February the 28th. Registration for spring and summer programs opens on Wednesday, March the 4th at 6 a.m. Registration can be done online, over the phone, or in person following the opening times of individual recreation centers. And you can view the uh, guide online now and sign up for an online registration account at recreation.nanaimo.ca or call 250-756-5200 for assistance. Um, and I'm delighted to report that the first state of the economy report uh, has been released, setting out the statistics and insight uh, around Nanaimo's economy. Uh, I must say that uh, if you base it on where we're at now, the future looks bright indeed. Uh, it's an annual publication now that offers insight into our current economic conditions, the economy, uh, and uh, is looking quite positive. We have just about 100,000 residents, over 6,000 licensed businesses, and the continued trend towards growth and economic success uh, is certainly there, and our unemployment rate is virtually exactly where you wish to be in terms of the sweet spot uh, for basically full employment. We are also celebrating a record year for development and capital projects in 2019. Uh, we had building permits issued of $445 million. Uh, in fairness, a $66 million permit. A shovel didn't hit the ground during the course of the calendar year, uh, but uh, believe that that project will uh, proceed in any event. Uh, they uh, allow, in, by way of building permits, for construction of 1,877 residential units, which includes 1,150 new multifamily units, 208 single-family dwellings, and 229 suites. Um, we're expecting uh, another banner year, obviously not uh, reaching the same magnitude. If it does, I'm afraid Mr. Lindsay and his staff will probably all be off on stress leave given the volume of processing that they've had to undertake with basically a similar staff as uh, occurred during the previous year when the building permits issued total 216 million. Now, down to basics. It's the annual water main flushing program which begins on March the 2nd. Uh, city crews will flush water, main, uh, water supply mains from the South Fork Dam to the water treatment plant. On each street, clean drinking water is flushed at high velocity through water mains to ensure that all piping is refreshed and any minor sediment within the pipes is removed. Residents are asked to minimize their water consumption if a change in water appearance is noticed. To clear water lines, residents are advised to turn on a cold water tap until the water runs clear. Any discoloration in water residents may experience during the flushing program is temporary and is not a health hazard. Anyone with a weakened immune system uh, should reference information on Island Health's website if they have concerns. Now, there is a item I do want to discuss in the briefest way, given the reporting in the local paper, particularly around um, 
what was recently done at the Regional District of Nanaimo, for which I think Chair Thorpe, in fairness, has received a few uncomplimentary letters. And I'm talking about the issue of camping in uh, Regional District parks. Uh, this matter was dealt with by this Council last year. Uh, a Supreme Court decision has made it very clear that citizens who are homeless in this province are entitled to sleep in public parks overnight subject to certain conditions. Uh, it's a pretty sad comment on the state of affairs in this country when courts have to make decisions deciding on what one's rights to the commons are. Uh, you know, seven or eight hundred years ago we were arguing about whether a cow got to graze and now we're deciding whether or not our citizens actually have a place to sleep at night in public parks. Um, it is not that the regional district of Nanaimo or the city of Nanaimo decided that people should be sleeping in public parks or encourages them to do so. But the court has given authority uh, to municipal government to regulate uh, camping overnight, restricted hours and the kinds of parks in which people can in fact sleep. And I think it's important to note that, that rather than criticize politicians locally uh, for instituting rules which the court has essentially authorized or, or sanctioned and indeed encouraged uh, in accordance with the Supreme Court decision, uh, it is certainly time for citizens who have concerns about whether or not their fellow citizens sleep in parks that maybe they should be taking it up with the provincial and federal governments uh, because that is where the issue, the jurisdiction, the resources and the legal responsibility lies. And finally, the mayor uh, is paid more than city councillors. So there is an expectation that the mayor will attend many public events in addition to what city councillors are expected to attend. And on Saturday night, I committed uh, the great faux pas that is all mayors could be guilty of on occasion. Uh, and that is not recognizing the presence of councillors who take of their personal time to go and attend public events. And I want to publicly apologize to Councillor Martman, who along with me attended the Black History Month gala dinner on Saturday night, and I failed to recognize her, and I want to publicly apologize now. <laughs> Having said that, we're on to presentations. Mr. Brady, you've got to be one of the most popular guys in town with this report. Please come down. <laughs> Arbut Road. Um, am I all set to go here? Do I need to click or are you going to click? I click. Just the middle one? Sorry, just. Okay, great. Thank you for me, allowing me to present tonight on the um, sort of a five year look back on the MRDT in Nanaimo. The, um, who is the NHA? The NHA is the, um, the group in Nanaimo which is made up of the 27 fixed roof accommodators within the city of Nanaimo proper. We, um, we collect the 2% hotel tax, uh, which became a 3% hotel tax as of January 1st. Um, the tax that we collect from our customers is referred to as the municipal and regional district tax, but in fact it's only the city of Nanaimo tax. There are taxes um, in Parksville and Qualicum and other areas of the regional district, but we, we do not administer that. We also don't administer the portion of the hotel tax which is applied to what we call OAPs, the online accommodation providers. That 2% and which has now become a 3%, that is collected by Airbnbs and the VRBOs and is remitted to the province and that flows through to the city and is used for, um, I think you're I don't want to use the word bankrolling, but I think the money is being held right now until you figure out the strategy for the affordable housing. So we don't um, have anything to do with that tax. Um, most of the initiatives that we administer or that we direct the funds to is done within the city of Nanaimo. We do have a couple of regional focuses that we work on through tourism Nanaimo and tourism Vancouver Island. And a couple of examples of that is a circle tour, the northern Circle Tour, which is the one through Victoria, or sorry, not Victoria, <laughs> faux pas, through Nanaimo, through uh, Langdale, Horseshoe Bay, up the Sunshine Coast, and then down through uh, Little River and Comox Courtney. That's the Circle Tour. There's also the other Circle Tour, which is the Cowichan Valley, Souk, Jordan River, and through Victoria. So we've got that, and we also have the um, Ride Island campaign, which is uh, an expansion of the Ride Nanaimo, and the Ride Island campaign is done with uh, riding areas such as Hornby Island, Cumberland, Campbell River, and soon to have Victoria and Souk and um, Bear Mountain. So, 
Um, the vision of the NHA, uh, we've been in this for a long time. Probably a lot of us have been sitting together and meeting for about 20 years. And it's, it's always been to, to make Nanaimo, you know, the sort of the meeting place, the central hub of, of the island. There's a, a lot of transportation links in and out of here. And our goal has been to try and grab some of that, um, those visitors as they come through Nanaimo, have them use this as their base camp and go off and do the Cowichan Valleys, the, the Cathedral Groves, the Tofinos, the Courtney Comox and the, at those places. Um, I won't go through the, um, do the goals individually. They're, they're pretty clearly laid out. We support product development. Um, we do that through our festivals and events grant program. We um, develop the industry partnerships and, um, and that is some of those circle tour campaigns that I re referred to. Uh, the marketing and public awareness, we continue to do that through Tours in Nanaimo. Um, most of the marketing initiatives are done through them. We do have a couple that the NHA administers ourselves and that's the Discover Vancouver Island magazine, which goes through um, Washington State, Oregon State, through the Lower Mainland, through Seattle, into Oregon, sorry, into um, Alberta, and Calgary, um, Edmonton, and places like that. We also do some work with Tours in Nanaimo on the Community Pride. That's something that uh, is going to be a big focus this year in trying to get our own community to invite their fam fam family and friends to come stay here. That's going to be even more important, we feel, going into this summer with all the uncertainty that there is around the COVID-19 and, um, and the downturn in the, in the stock exchange. The MRDT funds, just to show you how they quickly flow, they, um, like I said, they were 2% um, for the first five years. We are now 3%. It's, um, it's a, applied to our guest accommodation bill. We actually now are at a point where we're, we have a 16% uh, surcharge uh, for any guests. That's pretty well standard now in BC. Um, we collect the funds, they're remitted to the province. The province flows them through to the, to the city and then the city flows them through to the MR, to the US and then we administer them. Um, I've already explained that the 3% we collect and administer has nothing to do with the OAPs. Um, in the five years that we collected the MRDT, we collected $2.5 million um, in additional tax revenue to help generate uh, overnight visitations. Um, the remain, most of the money, uh, one million, just over $1 million of it has gone out um, through the grant application program that we do here. And that's for festivals and events, sports tourism, as well as we have granted a number of feasibility studies. The, the Deep Ocean Discovery Center is one of those is, that we funded over the last few years. And then the remainder of the 1.5 million, a lot of that is partnered with Tours Nanaimo on new marketing initiatives. Uh, how did we come up with festivals and events? That's people always ask us that. Um, we did that through a number of stakeholder engagement workshops back in, I guess, 2012, 2013, and 14. And we also did a reach out through the what was then the, the Nanaimo Daily News, had a large number of replies back and a lot of input from uh, from stakeholders and the citizens. And the general consensus was we don't need to spend a keep spending more and more money on marketing. We need to develop some products here in town to give people a reason to come to Nanaimo and hence the reason why we chose to focus on that low hanging fruit which is the festivals and events. And um, I'm happy to say that we're now getting to the point where we're almost oversubscribed in the amount of money and money ap applications that we're getting called for. We have just recently um, changed the granting application and we've always had a, a block out on a blackout on July and we've now extended that to August. Just the fact that accommodation, we just were too full. And uh, so we're pushing that money more into the shoulder seasons and, and the winter. Um, the other one that's coming up um, shortly is the Nanaimo Sports Tourism <laughs> Strategy. We've been working on that independently for a number of years. We have worked with city staff and with Richard Harding and his staff to come up with a sports strategy and we're not going out there trying to land the you know Canadian summer games or the Olympics we're looking at what can we do to to go after and just increase the type of sports tourism that works for Nanaimo and a lot of that is going to be built around going after the meetings um, side of sports there's a lot of AGMs there's a lot of regional meetings that kind of stuff we will be going after that 
And we will lean on Richard and his staff to uh, try and get you know, more facilities and more time for minor hockey and that kind of stuff. But uh, so, so then anyways, our, our primary measure that is used to evaluate the MRDT is um, increased overnight visitations for to Nanaimo. That's pretty well the industry standard across the province on how do you measure success in tourism and it's just more people coming through your town. Uh, some of the examples of what we've done with the money, we've uh, partnered with Tours in Nanaimo and we've done the, the business and meetings tourism is coming up right now. That's a, um, an MOU we're working on with the city, with the VICC, with Tours in Nanaimo and the NHA and that is to start going after more, supporting the VICC and Tours in Nanaimo to attract uh, more business meetings to Nanaimo. It's not just purely to fill the VICC, there's a lot of our members from Places like the Grand Hotel, the uh, the Coast Hotel, to Bethlehem Retreat, for example, they have a meeting room for about 50 people. So, um, for all ranges of that, that's what we're going after on that. Sports tourism strategy. I've already talked about that. Some of the past examples, um, we've done a, a lot of work with the Nanaimo Hospitality Ambassadors Program. That's training of volunteers that attend festivals. We've also worked on a, a training program with a lot of the frontline staff in the hotels, motels and any businesses that, like if you had a gas station, for example, you could send our staff to our training sessions and um, we work on that. The flat map, um, I think I've mentioned this before, we've done 25,000 of those in, in 2019. That flat map was developed and designed by front desk staff. It wasn't developed by managers and marketing agencies and it was what a front desk staff would need when they're engaging with their customers. And it was a really detailed map with no advertising. And um, so we have that and it's, it's very, very successful. The visitors publications, I've already talked to you about those. And we have the, the festivals and events website. We're working with Tours in Nanaimo on a website that will hopefully be the one-stop shop if you're coming to Nanaimo and you wanna know what's going on for festivals and events in our town. The problem is it's, trying to find out what's going on, when it's going on. Um, it's also hard for the event organizers to, um, to know what's going on. We had an occasion last summer where we had the world, uh, be the world pump track qualifier on the same weekend as the Blues Festival, on the same weekend as the VIX. So either weekend was open on either side, but that one weekend was jam-packed. So we're trying to get this website up so that everyone can find out where the events are. We've actually got it tied in now with our website. So if you go and apply for a grant application and when you have to input your dates, and so what will happen is those dates, you input them and if it conflicts with an existing event that we're already funding or that's already taking place in Nanaimo, it will stop them and they will have to, there'll be a communication between myself and, and those people to see you know, what the event is. Can we move it to a different date rather than just saying no? So it, it's gonna give us that, sort of forward-looking um, ability. We're also still working on the Explore Nanaimo app, which is a, um, an app that will show you, if you come to town as a tourist, where's all the restaurants, where's all the gas stations, where's all the attractions, where are the trails, where's the mountain biking, um, where are the bike shops, uh, that kind of stuff. We're working on that as well. And we continue to work on, on this Spot app, which is uh, an app, a walking tour app. So you could walk around the harbor here you look out and you see what you see today, and then you go on this spot then, and it'll show you what it was back, say, like in 1850 or whatever. And there's a little little diagram, a little discussion of what, what took place. We're also working with, um, had some talks with SFN about doing a second walking tour on say such and. Here's the sort of the meat and potatoes of it all. Uh, the, re the results of the five year. I included 2009, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. Because 2009 was when we really, really started working on this. It's when we were coming out of the um, economic downturn. And the sad fact is, is that when I was putting this all together for you, the news that was coming through is that we were now hitting market levels back in 2008 and 2009. So we're hoping we don't, we don't see a repeat of it. But mm -hmm. it shows you where we started, though, at 36.7%. And in 2009, we ended up at 77%. So a pretty, a pretty significant increase is it all thanks to the MRDT of course not it's uh, a lot of market trends have just changed but uh, we do think that the MRDT and the festivals and the marketing has all helped with that uh, average daily rates gone from $96 up to 141 
Revpar has gone from $35 to $109, and that's, that's the key stat if you're a hotelier or an investor into the hotel market. And it's revenue per available room, and it's basically just taking how many rooms you have available in your hotel, and you divide that by your revenue, what you did for the day, and that's your rev par. It's very, very simple, but that is the key measurement that uh, that bankers look at in our industry. So it was only because we were able to get out of that 35 and $66 market up to 109 that you finally saw some of the projects starting to move forward. MRDT revenues, first year, which was about a 10-month year, we clicked at 270,000, and in 2019, we clicked at 610, and our original um, forecast for 2020 was we we're going to collect around, we thought around 810, 820. We've now reduced that back to around $700,000 because of what's taking place. We'd rather be safe and be within budget rather than uh, be sorry and wish we had reduced numbers. So what's next? Um, we've gone to the 3%. We're going to continue to work with SFN and uh, we're happy to say that we're a, a funding partner with SFN on the Indigenous Journeys, sorry, I got that totally wrong. Tribal Journeys 2020, my, my apologies. Um, we're going to present the senior staff and hopefully mayor and council down the road with a presentation on the sports tourism strategy. And we're gonna to continue to work with our industry partners on the meetings and business sales and marketing strategy. And we'll continue to, mar most importantly, we're gonna to have to continue to monitor the short and long-term impacts of the COVID-19 and the uh, current adjustments uh, taking place in the market. I know today in, Nanaimo, in Vancouver alone, they had a, a conference for uh, this year for 2,500 delegates that just has now moved it to next year. So uh, we hope we don't lose business. We can see some displacement and, and moving to different dates, but uh, who knows? So that's basically my, uh, my presentation. In a nut year, in a nut year, in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be a nutty year. Um, that's my presentation. So uh, I know I didn't drag out a big crowd, but uh, if anyone's got any questions. I was going to say, referring to the American presidential years, the nut year may be a bit of a Freudian slip. Uh, Mr. Brady, thank you very much. Questions? Oh, Councillor Bonner. <clears throat> Things, if I may, uh, Mr. Yep. Brady, and uh, through your worship to Mr. Brady, um, the OAP tax. Um, I'm sure you must have done a fair amount of research on this prior to uh, that being implemented in terms of how much, how much there is in this town. Do you have any idea how much that tax amount is that w hasn't flowed through us yet? Uh, I could. I don't have that at the tip of my tongue. I'm sorry. I could get that information for you. It's. We, the reporting from the province on that is a little, I don't know if vague is the right word, but um, I don't know the real answer to that yet. But um, we do occasionally, they, re, they report it every third, three months is my understanding, whereas the MRDT that we receive is monthly, they do it on a quarterly basis with the, um, with the OAPs. I see, okay. Um, and you mentioned the fact that you no longer um, uh, put out grants now for July and August. Correct. Um, just for the clarity of the folks listening, who, who makes that decision? Who's the we in that? The we in that, it was the, the board of the NHA. So we, we have a, a nine-person executive, um, all made up of accommodators, and that's who made that decision. I see. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Now, having said that, um, we are open to, if someone comes along and they have the BC Summer Games, for example, that would be landing in, a, in an August, we would be obviously be open to discussing that. It's just all those small one-offs that, um, that we just know we don't have the capacity for that we've, um, we've closed that on. Councillor Hemmons. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Mr. Brady, the sports tourism strategy, is that for attracting um, sports teams to come and use our facilities, or is that more like attracting things like the BC bike race? And, and is it events? Is it? It's it's all it's of it? all of that, and a lot of it is is basic doing the foundational work of you know what we've gone through and done an inventory of what facilities we have, what events we <coughs> what we can attract. Like there's no sense going after uh, an indoor cycling 
race, for example, when we don't have a velodrome. But we do have fantastic mountain bike trails, so why not go after BC Bike Race? Um, a lot of it is, like I said, it's just basing, building that foundation, talking with staff to make sure that what industry is trying to go after is actually working with what staff has the uh, capability and capacity for as well. And some of it will eventually get down to saying, hey, you know, if we had a, I'm probably the wrong guy to be talking about multiplex arenas um, <laughs> based on my history, but, you know, here could be an example of we build a case down the road of, uh, of a larger soccer field or a stadium or something like that. But that's not the goal of the strategy right now. It's more to go after that low-hanging fruit. Um, one of the examples is we're working with minor hockey. Mm -hmm. And minor hockey has uh, very smartly and very quickly realized that there is funding available. Their events are all in the off season, and we're now at, rather than going through and having a number of atom teams and bantam teams and all the different levels, we're now working on a, an agreement with minor hockey to have one funding letter with them, a letter of understanding, and we'll we'll figure out what that funding dollar will be. But that that kind of strategy. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Yes. You, you pulled your. Let oh, me. okay. Thank you. I, I most of all just wanted to say thank you so much for the presentation. Um, tourism is near and dear to my heart, as you know. Yeah. And I love to see that in the vision statement, we're still working on community pride. And I believe everyone in our community should be very proud of our city yeah. and everything it has to offer. So thank you for your work. Thank yeah, you. On the community pride thing, we're. We're a little bit handcuffed because we can't support, say, something like a, like a parade, which is a great community event, but unfortunately it's a community-driven event which really doesn't drive overnight visitations. Different if we have, um, if the parade got to the point where it was starting to attract a lot of the American marching bands or the mainland marching bands. But it's those events that are great community events that unfortunately it's just not in our mandate to support. That's more up to, uh, to all of you to support those. But I just Sorry. meant community pride but community in general. Pride, though, yeah, we have a great place, <laughs> and uh, you know the people that come here, they they're amazed. And the mountain bike, the mountain bike people that come here that we run into on the trails are just absolutely blown away by what is hidden here, and they didn't know. And this is not people from from the states necessarily. This is just people even from Vancouver, the Lower Mainland, the North Shore, Victoria, that are getting here and realizing that Nanaimo is like, wow, that's a that's a really great place. So. Mr. Brady, as, uh, as I can happily say, from the floor of the Sailor's Sea to top ten, one of the top ten dive destinations in the world to the tip top of dear old Mount Benson, we have a lot to be uh, grateful for in this community and I want to thank you and your organization for continuing to promote a very important part of our economy and thank you for bringing us such a good news story tonight. Thank you and thank you for all of you for all of your support for uh, tourism because we can't do it without all of you supporting us, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next are consent items. <coughs> Item 8 on the agenda, motion for adoption of the consent items. Councillor Thorpe, seconded Councillor Bonner. All those in favour? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the delegation for Mr. Hamilton. I don't see a Mr. Hamilton present. So Ms. Gurry just drops off the agenda? Um, yes, we... yes, Your Worship, so he doesn't seem to be here, so Council can move forward with the agenda, and if he happens to show up, you could make that decision well, at that time. Welcome to speak at that time, thank you. Uh, the next item is reports, a Union of BC Municipalities Community Emergency Preparedness Fund Grant 2020. Ms. Legan, I think this is your first formal presentation to Council. And congratulations. <laughs> a little coaching on the side. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear what Councillor Armstrong said, and I'm, I may be glad. I don't know. <laughs> Something about short and sweet, I understand. <laughs> Councillor Armstrong's always ambitious for uh, exactly. <laughs> brevity. Please proceed. Don't let us interrupt you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, we are seeking approval to apply to um, the Union of British Columbia Municipalities Community Emergency Preparedness Fund for a grant of $25,000 to enhance the Emergency Operations Center capacity through the purchase of monitors and laptops, which we will use 
um, when we uh, purchase them and then deploy them in the new EOC in fire station number one. Thank you very much. Any questions before I ask for the motion? Councillor Martman. I was going to move. Then please do. Uh, move the motion uh, that the council endorse the application for the Union of B British Columbia Municipalities Community Emergency Preparedness Fund grant and the administration for 25000 to enhance the emergency operations center capacity through the purchase of the additional equipment. Good. Second. Seconded, Councillor Gesselbrock. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Your first success before council. <laughs> <laughs> I can't guarantee it will always work that way. <laughs> <laughs> Better than Mr. Bloomberg. Um, the next is item 10C. Uh, Mr. Rudolph, the updated 2019-2022 strategic plan. Thank you, Your Worship. This is an item that's uh, been before council for the last couple of weeks. Uh, as you recall, Council adopted a new strategic plan early last year as part of its new four-year mandate and as part of good governance. Uh, you've taken upon yourself to review that strategic plan once a year. At the beginning of the year you did that through a facilitated workshop and uh, I think you've made some minor modifications to the document. In fact, we've refreshed the look of it to, we hope, make it look more user-friendly and reader friendly and um, so it's back for your formal adoption this evening and any additional or comments that you might have about it. Thank you very much. Anyone going to make the motion? I'll move the recommendation. Seconded Councillor Hemmons. Discussion? Councillor Marmon? No. Oh, sorry. Councillor Brown? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I won't be supporting this recommendation. Um, I've had reservations about our strategic plan to begin with, and I, I do think good things are happening, but I think it's far too broad and, and lacks the focus I would expect with strategy. Um, that became very clear to me during uh, uh, our refresh, where it was very clear that there's still a broad amount of topics, and, and I, I don't think we did the hard work to narrow that down and focus. and, and, and and then that was even made more clear to me when we, we made the recent amendments uh, to add public safety. Not that I necessarily disagree with the addition of public safety, um, but I think a clear refusal to have the conversation about what that meant for the strategic plan, what it meant for work plan, and, and what everybody meant by public safety. So I think the sum of it to me shows a lack of strategy um, and a lack of focus. And, uh, you know, we had that little diagram of all the ships, and we were, I think we're doing... We're doing all the things that a city does, but we haven't emphasized one or two or three items uh, further than the others. And without that emphasis, uh, without sort of performance t t indicators tied to that, it it's hard for me to endorse the plan, so I won't. Thank you. Councillor Bonner. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I too won't in endorse the plan as it sits. Um, and I agree with all the points that Councillor Brown has made, but to me, the meeting that we had when we talked about this, the motion came out 5-4. And I think that a strategic plan should be 9-0. Everybody should be buying in this. And, and I think we just need to sit down, have a bit more conversation on it, flesh out all the things that each one of us are having issues with, and then come up with a more robust plan that we can all agree with. I just think 5-4 um, is not a good way to go into anything like this. Thank you. Councillor Armstrong. Thank you. Um, I understand what both councillors are saying. However, I think the broadness is not a major concern for me because where, where the issue comes in for me is when we get our plans. The work plans to me are the most important document that we have and I think most of them are pretty focused with specific um, outcomes and reaches. So I'm more concerned with that than I am about the plans because normally your strategic priorities are pretty broad but it's your actual work plans that need to be really specific. So. For that reason, I will support, but I do hear the concerns raised. Councillor Hemmons. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm in support of the strategic plan. I think the messiness of the conversations we've had to date indicates just the diversity of experience we have around the table. 
I'm comfortable with the actions under each of the core, the categories. I agree the categories are a bit broad and they could kind of fit into any strategic plan, but I think when we get a bit more granular and we go into our key focus areas followed by our actions, it, it shores it up for me. So I think we had some really good conversation. We didn't land on a 9-0 and I think, you know, waiting till we do land on a 9-0 might get us into our third year of term. <laughs> We have a diversity of opinions that is part of our strength. Um, so I'm in support of this plan. Councillor Martin. Um, I'd like to say I'm in support of the plan. I believe this is our vision and our strategy. Our action items will, will fall from this. And I think Councillor Hemmings has summed it up very well. So thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Gesselbrook. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, I'm in support of the plan. Um, I think there's been ample dialogue on it, and for the most part, there's pretty broad uh, consensus on the direction that we're going. Uh, there's been a bit of a debate around uh, some definitions um, that was brought to light uh, recently, um, and I think there's been ample time to discuss the plan and to provide input in baking in more metrics. I, I, I think the, the points of Councillor Brown are well taken and I think in general we can uh, rely more on metrics and be building our, uh, our uh, plan uh, around outcomes um, and I think that uh, we as an organization are working in that direction and I, I look forward uh, to the future evolution of, of our planning processes. Thank you. As Thoreau said, if a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to the music that he hears, however measured or far away. I don't expect unanimity on this council, uh, and I'm, I'm delighted to see that uh, there are concerns still around the strategic plan, but overall, um, I don't see any value in trying to attain what might uh, lead to unanimity. Um, I think that is a, a worthy goal, but not a likely prospect for all of us. So. I'm certainly going to vote in support of this plan, and if I don't see any other speakers, I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Councillors Brown and Bonner, opposed? Thank you very much. Carries. The next is bylaws, 2019-2023 financial plan amendment bylaw. I'd like to move uh, the financial plan amendment bylaw 2020, number 7279.02, to amend the 2019-2023 financial plan be adopted. Second to Councillor Hemmins. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The bylaw status sheet is for information only. We have no notices of motion, no other business and question period. Ms. Gurry. Mr. Barclay, 10C. If you could introduce yourself for the record, the usual, please. Yes, Les Barclay, City of Nanaimo. Um, my question relates to your strategic plan. I, I watched uh, much of the, uh, the, the five hour meeting that you had. Um, and my question is prior to your, uh, that planning, planning session, and following the creation of this, what sort of community engagement did Council have? I hear you know, the 5 4, and this is what you've heard. What I do not hear is what do the citizens of Nanaimo think of this strategic plan? So there's my question. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Worship. Um, there was no, I believe, no engagement done on the sort of touch up here, but there was at least three sessions held uh, and then it was put out to uh, for public input um, and then that input was received back by council before the adoption of the plan uh, that I believe was the extent of it so what what did the public say about it uh, Ms. Gurry Thank you, Worship. Just further to Councillor Brown's comment. Um, so this year is just a refresh of the plan that you developed last year. Last year, the engagement was um, a few meetings where the public had the opportunity to come and speak and provide their input, as well as a e town hall in May, I believe, or early spring last year that we did around the strategic plan and the themes, and we received engagement that time. And the reason there wasn't a more fulsome engagement um, for the initial plan that 
you did last year was basically and decided and discussed at the meetings that you had just had an election. So that was the time for people to engage and people knew what you were running on and what your, what your priorities were. So that was what you had spoken about at that time. Councillor Armstrong. I'll just add, when it comes to community engagement, I read every email that comes in, as does everybody else at this council. And for me, one of the big issues that I saw was the public safety. Went to a, a meeting where there's well over 400, you know, there's groups going. So that's why I did put that forward at the next thing. So I think anybody here, any council member, if they hear something that's very significant for them, they will have the opportunity to bring it forward, which was done. So I think, I think it's ongoing. And for me, I take a lot of my stuff from what I hear in the public and from the emails, like the emails are very important to me when I'm getting emails constantly on certain issues, then it's interesting. So that's just my point. Okay, can I ask one, one last question? Um, my question would be a request to council uh, when you next uh, make a revision to uh, the strategic plan that uh, you include uh, public feedback on pound the table so that, so that the public can kind of get a sense. Now, when you get emails, that's fine. You, you're getting a sense, but the public's not getting a sense of what, what their, uh, their, uh, their fellow citizens think. But uh, I think pound the table would be a, a very good way to do that. Thank you. Thank you. What did I say? I, we, I think we knew what you meant. Thank you. Motion for adjournment. Moved, Councillor Hammond. Seconded, Councillor Gesselbrock. All those in favour, motion carries. Thank you.